So the question has come up with uh, some folks that have looked at my video is whether or not you can leave Hoya outdoors during the winter time. Uh, I've been experimenting with it, really. Uh, these were all left outside here all winter long. I fabbed these up late in the year last year and uh, just left them sit outside. I have a trailer that I keep in the backyard that I use as kind of a fabrication table. And uh, so, you know, here's different examples of different sizes. Uh, some of these I retrofit by stopping up the end. Other ones were uh, originals where I just used the caulk. And you see here the Gorilla Glue. Uh, here's the silicone caulk. You know, it's different methods I've been trying. Uh, I found the easiest way to test these if you need to test them. Plug up the one hole here. And you'll be able to tell if you've got back pressure on it as to whether or not it'll hold there. The smaller ones are a little easier to tell than the larger ones. That's good solid pressure on that one. So all of them that I left out seemed to be pretty good. Uh, I had one pot that got left out in standing water and it cracked. So you know apparently the constant moisture affected it. And you know this is Michigan. We had a pretty tough winter this year. Uh, the temperatures were down near zero a couple of times. And definitely uh, we had some freezing and thawing going on. In fact, today is the 21st of April and it's really the first nice day that we've had this year. So it's a little bit unusual that way. Uh, this is another idea that I've been working on. Uh, actually using a saucer in conjunction with a piece of tile. You can see this. Uh, I took the saucer and I drilled a couple of holes in there and then uh, use the Gorilla Glue to glue this to a piece of tile. The thought with this is to use it for uh, shallow rooted plants like uh, radishes uh, to do kind of a square foot gardening thing that I would bury this about six inches below the surface and then run my uh, irrigation tubing in and back out and use this as a very large subsurface oil. Uh, and again, you know, the thought is because uh, I can plant very densely over the top of this, then I could grow those uh, shallow rooted plants fairly easily with that. The uh, saucer here came from Ikea. Get over where you can see it a little bit perhaps. Um, they had these for a dollar and fifty cents, which is pretty inexpensive. Unfortunately, I've been back, they don't have them anymore. But uh, it's just an inexpensive clay saucer. and. Uh, well, just another part of the experiment, so we'll see how it works. So part of my philosophy here is uh, try not to disturb the garden too much, you know, if it were possible to uh, not disturb the soil at all. That would be great. This has all been double dug. Um, originally when I started out, this was all sand. I've had to add a lot of organic material. Uh, it's been done gradually over two or three years worth of time. Uh, you see here, you know, some things some people would normally pull. There's violets growing here. Um, makes an excellent spring salad green. Uh, Dutch white clover here, which uh, I hate to dig out because it's a nitrogen fixer, but it's right next to this hoya that we're going to try to get out of there. And of course, you know, I do have some uh, grass that's growing in of various sorts, so we'll get that out of there. But we'll uh, go ahead and dig up this way and see how it's doing. So I'm just going to get out away from it a little bit and I'm try to get underneath it with the shovel. Not break anything. And I can see the feed tube over here coming from the one that's next door. No weeds. But, you, know, you look at the texture of that soil. It's really come up from what I had a couple years ago. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen up around that just a little bit more here. And dig down in. And you see it's a couple inches below the surface. And that's, I think, one of the keys to making the Oyas overwinter in the ground is to not have anything exposed. So this is the old method with the stopper. Again, I'm not doing that anymore. Let's see if we can get a finger in there and just uh, pull that up without leaving the bottom. There it is. And you see everything's intact. 
just pop the, uh, the hose off of the last one and take it off here. And it really wants to hang on, but you know, there it is. The, uh, everything looks alright, doesn't look like anything's cracked. And we see the leavings of some roots there. I'm going to put my glove back on and brush this off a little bit. But, uh, well, there you have it. it. It did over winter and everything appears to be fine. Now, what I'll do with this uh, this year is I'm going to cap this off. I've got uh, some larger pieces of tile. I'm just going to put those on with silicone caulk and get away from the rubber stoppers. So I will go through my oyas and pull them up one at a time and uh, retrofit them. I just found that the problem with the stoppers is that the, uh, the sunlight and the ozone degrade them. Uh, it's not such a big problem when they're buried like that, but the other issue I've got is the dog gets in there every once in a while and knocks something loose. And, uh, you wouldn't believe how quickly you can drain 275 gallons of water, uh, but if you pop one of those stoppers out of there, it's a matter of hours before the entire uh, tote back behind the garage filled with rainwater is just gone. So. You know, maintaining the integrity of the system to make sure that uh, you don't have any major leaks is uh, the thing you want to do. So I'm going to go next door here and get the next one, pull it up and see if uh, we have success. So here it is. And you see how nice and loose that soil is. It's a good thing. So it took some work to get it there and I'm starting to a lot of organic material left in it. Again, get down underneath there. And you see the stopper just came out. So again, earthworm action there. Whoops. I guess I'll hurt it. We'll grow back. And there we go. Uh, it's still intact. And again, you see the roots. You know, if I dig this up, this is all, you know, nice rooty structure around there where the plants have looked to uh, get water. And you see here, uh, roots growing up against the side of the pot. So, you know, it's two for two. Uh, I've got maybe 25 or 30 of these in this bed. So I'll go ahead and dig those up and report on uh, how many of them are still intact. Digging up this oh yeah, it's interesting to see. You see the root mat on here? That's all roots that grew around the pot. You know, it's almost like a carpet on there. It really goes to show how effective the whole thing is. It, see all down in here? I forget exactly what was planted in this area. I think tomatoes last year. But uh, really, you know, it's outstanding. Uh, we had a drought last summer. And uh, I only had to surface water the garden about three times, just to give you an idea of how effective this whole oil system is. And again, you see all that nice uh, organic material that's now incorporated into that soil. So this is a, a good thing. Yeah, here's one that, uh, as I was trying to get it out, I hit it with the shovel. So. It wasn't, you know, it doesn't show signs of squalling, it just looks like a fracture from having uh, smacked it on. I'm going to take a look at what's inside. Um, it's one of the problems when you have those stoppers is that uh, you can accumulate dirt inside the Oya. It doesn't affect the performance at all. But you can see what's in there. There's the original uh, piece of tile that was used to stop that off. So, no big deal. I get some spare pots around. Yeah, although I just pulled that surface off of there, so yeah, two new pots apparently. So I be a little bit more careful with the shovel. Um, I'm experimenting here, uh, also using a spading fork instead of uh, a shovel. I think it may be a little bit more gentle on these and allow me to get down underneath. So we'll see what happens. So. One casualty uh, so far out of the four or five that I've pulled out. Just to show how these Oyas were installed, you see 
here's the top of one that I'm digging out right now. Uh, it's approximately four inches below the uh, surface of the soil. So you, know, you see it, it's down in there a ways, and I think that's part of the reason that uh, we haven't had any cracking problems here with these. Uh, you know, it's just uh, the fact that it's down in the soil more seems to uh, help protect the clay pot.